Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center. Here to congratulate you on your brand new 2024 J Flight SLX 261 BHS. I'm going to walk you around your travel trailer here and show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, I want you to leave plenty of room for that awning. On your off campsite, besides your slide, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power is going to plug in all the way on the rear. The middle of the rear there. And then your docking station for water is going to be around the corner here for campsites. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, unhook our hitch. Next thing we're going to do is level our unit. The unit comes with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply retract to lower, extend to raise. Now once you got this up and got it level, next thing we're gonna do is stabilize it. All four corners of the unit got these scissor stabilizing jacks. And a three quarter inch socket hand crank. Uh, run these down. I recommend some stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads that can protect the feet of these from dirt and debris. Help them from sinking into blacktop in the summer. Uh, get them, run off four of them down, put these down just until they're taut. Once you've got some resistance on your hand crank, stop. Remember, we're just stabilizing the unit. We don't want to lift it and use, uh, lose our levelness. So get all four of them down. Got your unit level, stable. Next thing we'll do is hook up our power and water. Big long 30 amp cord will plug in here on the rear. These actually go in, say, like 11 o'clock, and then turn it to noon, put on your black washer. Now, at the end of this 30 amp service, should you need to, there's a 30 to 15 amp reducer that comes in your convenience pack. Got your power hooked up, let's hook up some water. At campsites, we'll hook up to a city water connection. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in the unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so I always use this. Hook that up, hook up your hose, come on around to your hot water heater. Don't turn that hose on yet. Make sure that our pressure release valve is down. Sometimes it's left like that sure it's down in the closed position so that is good then you can turn that hose on now if that hose been out for a few minutes we're going to come up inside here i want to get to that bathroom because i want to open up these sinks and showers i'm going to go ahead and open up my slide so what we're going to do get this slide open so we can get into this sink, our hallway sink, our shower, turn all those on, get a nice steady flow of water going through them, get all the air out of the lines. And then we can shut them up, off and we're all set to camp. Go ahead and uh, flush your toilet a couple times, get a couple gallons of water down in there. Now let's say we're gonna go camping and we're not gonna use city water. We're gonna go dry camping. In that case, on our campsite, above our tires, is our fresh water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. You can simply gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right there. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks. There's also a fresh water button. When that's full, put that cap back on. And then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump and hook to the city water. That's already pressurized. All right, we're all set to camp, power and water. Got our slides open, we're all ready. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit, continuing here in the front. Let's start with, you have a cover for your propane tanks. They are on a regulator. Simply point this toward the tank you wish to be using. Uh, Lefty Lucy to open these. I go one battery, or excuse me, one tank at a time. That way I know when I'm out. Otherwise you can put that in the middle It'll automatically cross over. Check your battery post every now and then. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose. On your power tongue jack. Say you lose power under this rubber stopper right here. 
That hand crank, or a three quarter inch crank, will get this up and down without power. Coming around our off camp side, we've got a big pass through storage area. Our stabilizing jack. I want to mention on your slides, you've got these seals. You want to add to the longevity of the life of your trailer and your slides. Go ahead and apply. They've got a, uh, a lubricant that you can apply to these to keep them nice and flexible and pliable over the years. Keep them from dry rotting. Very important maintenance on those. Make sure you sweep off your slide before bringing that in if you're underneath anything. You got an outdoor shower out here. Your black 751 key will open that hot and cold shower. Black tank flush. We'll talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks. Our city water connection again. These are black and gray dumps. Our low drain. Low point drains are right up underneath here. Here's where you plug in your cable at the campsites. Spare tire. Keep that uh, cover on there. That helps add the longevity of the life of that as well. Your prep for a backup camera. There is a ladder that you can buy from Lippert that'll go on these. Your hot water heater, turn that on out here. Once it's full of water. Spray port hose will hook up here. Clean things off. You got a quick connect LP right down here for your outdoor kitchen, which is really just a fridge and some countertop. There's a flue for your furnace, a few things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Two, if you are running your furnace steer clear, that does get hot. Uh, you got a couple outdoor speakers, a vent for your hood range, cable, and one or cable <laughs> and one tent out here if you want to hook the TV up out here. Again, your fresh water, your fresh water drain. It'll dump that real quick. And that about covers everything outside. Let's go take a look on the inside. I'll tell you on these steps, whether bringing them in or out, you want this door left all the way open. I should get secured. It's a little windy out here today. Um, you want this door all the way, all the way open. Otherwise, this will catch on it when you're bringing it in and out. Coming up in your unit. First thing I always like to point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone is camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Coming up on the wall here, we've got our exterior lights and our interior lights. Little control panel right here to show a battery, fresh, black, and gray levels. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you need that fresh water. Your awning. Keep an eye on that when you run it out. Um, it doesn't automatically stop. You only want to run it out until your flap falls down or less. They're not made for big windstorms or heavy rain. I uh, recommend to bring them in in those cases. They're great for shade and light rain. Again, our slide control, 110s and USB ports. Down here is our 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mentioned that's 12 volt, that is always running off your battery. One touch lighted in here. Kitchen sink. I just want to mention you got some plumbing in here to maintain. Uh, square head screws will pop them open. Get back in there and just keep an eye on things. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose over time. You got a self explanatory microwave, light, and fan. Above your cooktop here. These will just simply press in, and when your gas is on, they'll light from here. Same thing on your oven. Come over here to press and hold for your pilot light and spark it here. That'll light that down there, then turn it to your desired temperature. Separate manuals on all these. Just give you a gist of them. Your ever chill fridge. Everything for controls are for that are inside here. Settings. That's your heat return. Our bunk areas. Coming into our living room, we've got our thermostat. Going through that, you can turn your AC on, your heat, and off. Three settings, real simple. You will mention 
Um, when you shut your AC off, that goes off quickly. When you shut your heat off, that takes a few minutes for it to cycle through before the heat shuts off. It's just the fan. This tabletop will lift and remove and set on these rubber stoppers. Get rid of these legs here. Put your flat cushions on top. Another sleeping area. Need more area to sleep? Jackknife this up and down. More sleeping area. Storage underneath there. This will fold down toward the front. Your prep for a TV here. Here's your connection for it. Um, these fall out often. They just set up in there. Uh, if you hook up a TV, make sure you push in that button there and have that green light on before you run your digital channel scan. That will be your antenna. Sound system here. AM, FM, Bluetooth. Uh, let's see if we can pick up anything out here. Do a quick scan. So indoor. Outdoor. Or both. Nice sound system. Um, again, AM, FM, Bluetooth, auxiliary. Emergency escape window. Storage under your bed that holds up on hydraulics. There's some paperwork for you and your um, spray port hose. This lighting in here is one touch. You got a couple of doors here that you want to make sure you have snapped open for travel. We don't want these banging around while you're going down the road. Prep for a TV here. Here's your backer. There's your cable in 110. Smoke alarm here. Lastly, I'm going to head back into the hallway to mention more plumbing to keep an eye on. 110 with GFCI reset is here. And you do have a hand crank open vent here. Lastly, your hot water heater. This is where you turn that on and off at. Uh, once, you're, once it's full of hot water, go ahead and set out your desired temperature. About well, covers everything in here. Act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. Close your vents. Just start at the back. Just shut off all my lighting. A lot of this is individual lighting. The easiest way to tell that is to come to your control panel, shut off my interior lights, and then any other lights that I see that are on are one touch and accent lighting. So go through the unit, get all the lights off. My next phrase is doors and drawers. Walk through the unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's gonna impede our slide from coming in. Saw that from up there. Make sure this door and this drawer are closed. That's your biggest points in here. And we're just gonna hit in. You'll notice the slide, the bottom always comes in first. It's just because that's where that mechanism is at, is on the bottom. You will also hear when it comes in a little noise that sounds like a grind. You hear it when it's all the way in or all the way out. That's just the slide mechanism telling you that it's all the way in or all the way out. And to let go of the button. There's your noise. So, again, exiting the unit. Make sure that door is all the way open. These legs are adjustable. Simply on a cotter pin you pull here and put them where you want them. Got an uneven ground that helps. Lock that door in. And latch here. Before we leave the dump station, you're gonna lock and deadbolt this door. Lift and turn that handle. That's how you want that door for, for travel. All right, if we are out dry camping, we're gonna bring up our stabilizing jacks, get up underneath here, dump our fresh water tank, and head on home or the nearest dump station, whatever we're in need of. If we're at a campsite, we're going to unhook our power, our water, our cable, bring up our stabilizing jacks, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, park accordingly. The dump's going to be almost all the way to the rear on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. That 10 foot hose comes your convenience pack. Hook that up. First thing you're going to pull is that black handle. When it sounds like it's no longer draining, go inside, check the level of your black tank. Show's empty or almost. Come back out here, leave that handle open. 
grab the hose at the dump station and hook it up here to this tank flush valve. Again, emphasizing leaving that handle open. That's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, close your handle or close your flush. Make sure all that washout that you put in there has drained. Then close your black and pull your gray. Usually while my grays are draining, get up underneath there and dump my freshwater tank. Again, that gray is going to be clean. The water is your sinks, your showers. When that's done, close your gray and conveniently and sanitarily store your sewage hose right in your bumper and head on home. Again, so thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoy this J flight for many years to come. Happy camping!